So we're going to use this, the SOAP format. So your summary statement is that the learner seems to have lack of initiative. What you observe and what others have observed is that rather than seeking out clinical experiences, this learner waits for things to be assigned to them. <clears throat> um, they don't really seem eager to see patients or carry out their responsibilities. Um, they just seem to be content with doing the minimum and just kind of getting by. So what would be your assessment of that, that, that cognitive, non-cognitive, disability, and what's my other category there? Um, oh, um, system painting. <laughs> Above the 50, sometimes it drops out of the back side. Well, you want to see whether it's a knowledge deficit that they really just don't know and don't know what to do, or if it's an attitude issue, right? And they just don't care and don't want to do it. I think that's sort of the first. Exactly. Four so, okay, good. Yes. Is it cognitive? Is it knowledge based? Or is it non cognitive and maybe attitude? So, how do you decide? Well, I mean, a lot of it, because it could also be, you know, <coughs> it, 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 it's a, a good student, a good learner who's just very passive. So, you would push them out a little bit and say, okay, what would you do? You would ask him questions and not let him off the hook. Okay. So you do some there's some remediation there. Good. So you do some probing, right, to really kind of test their knowledge. Um, you probably want to ask some things about are there are there other things going on? You know, are there some other stressors, are there some other challenges that are inhibiting them from having the motivation, wanting to carry out the work? Somebody else had um, and if those are okay, if it doesn't seem to be knowledge. It doesn't seem to be systems, then, then you start thinking, this is not cognitive, and now you have to sort out, is it behavioral, is it attitudinal, is there actually a mental illness, is it depression? Because you feel pretty unmotivated when you're depressed. Um, anxiety tends to give you more disorganization, um, although that can worry you out. Okay, for this learner, you're, a, you're kind of subjective, is they seem to always provide a very limited assessment um, of, this, of the patient, of the situation. Uh, what you and others are observing is that the differential is limited or incomplete for the level of that learner and the complexity of the patient. The learner appears to lack confidence in providing a reasonable differential. The learner is vague about the differential and is unwilling to commit to a diagnosis whether they're right or wrong. So what are some of the potential assessment of systems disability? Knowledge deficit. Okay, so is it cognitive? Is it actually a knowledge deficit? Okay, do they feel intimidated, right? Which, as especially as a third year medical student or an intern, it's pretty easy to feel intimidated at those levels. So is that part of it? Is it more a systems issue about the context and getting them to realize that they just need to come up with a differential, right or wrong, we're going to start from that point in time? Could be the cognitive part of reasoning. Right? So they may have the knowledge, but getting to that reasoning, critical thinking, where you synthesize and pull it together to come up with a diagnosis and assessment plan, and that would call that cognitive. Um, they could have a learning disability from the standpoint of being able to then gather information um, and synthesize it quickly without having time to think about it and process it. Um, so your overall subjective is seems to have lack of judgment. What you observe is difficulty balancing personal and professional responsibilities. Um, the student's professional conduct is inappropriate towards patients, staff, and faculty. And feelings. Does the patient have any substance? The person has any substance abuse? Oh, well, it could be that non hospital okay. substance abuse. Definitely, that would that would be one of the things you want to think of. The person has a lot of stressors at home, and it's worse than stressors so. Right, so is it problems and systems? Okay, other stresses, other responsibilities? Um, so this one, we're thinking, probably not cognitive, really doesn't seem like it. So it's either non-cognitive or systems, and then sorting out the details. So getting more of the details to be able to decide Where's the category so you can decide on the intervention? So, let me just hit the bottom line of the BPA. 
mitigation. Um, so one is do it early, nip it in the bud, deal with it early on when it seems like it's just a small problem. Shared responsibility. It's not just your responsibility, even as a group. It really is also the learner's responsibility. Categorize the cause. Come up with the diagnosis. Use those cognitive, non-cognitive disability um, systems to help you categorize it, and then from there decide where does it fall. Have a clear and specific plan. Make sure the learner knows what it is. Accurately document the details and the plan and the whole process is going to happen for remediation. Make sure there's resolution. And so that's a part of that timeline that this shouldn't be endless. Um, there really should be, is it something that should take a week? Is it something that takes two months? Is it something that takes six months? Is it something that takes a year? But up front, decide how long is it going to take and if it's not remediated, if it's not um, completely resolved by that time, then what are you going to do? And decide that up front when you're doing the remediation point. And everything is not remediable. Some things really aren't. And so that's part of what you have to decide um, at that point of final follow-up. If it's not remediated, maybe it can't be. And then you're going down that path of should their life be going in a different direction in a different profession. And keeping the goal in mind, it really is developing the professional to the point where they can be in independent practice. 